Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous uh, sessions, uh, we have started, we have discussed um, uh, various aspects of uh, regulations, uh, why, what are the rationale for uh, regulations uh, in financial market. And then we started discussing uh, some of the ways, types of uh, financial regulation. So one of them was the capital requirements and we discussed the capital requirements uh, in the context of Basel framework and we discussed Basel 1, 2 and more importantly Basel 3 that is the reason one. So in this session we will discuss other aspects, other types of uh, regulations. The one is here the prompt corrective action shortly this is called PCAs. So, in a nutshell, prompt corrective action means intervention, an early intervention by the central bank. When they see that, when they get a signal that the bank, the commercial bank or the financial institute, the bank, concerned bank uh, is going to get into a uh, fair trouble, a kind of banking crisis uh, is going to pop up. So, based on that uh, signal, the Reserve Bank of India, in the case of India, the Reserve Bank of India makes early interventions. So, this is a framework, prompt corrective action is a framework for intervening, uh, for, for the early intervention by the central bank uh, in the working of the respective bank. So, prompt corrective action provisions that require, uh, in the case of US is FDIC, in India is RBI, to intervene earlier and more vigorously when a bank gets into trouble. So, the prompt corrective action or PCA is a framework under which banks with a weak financial metrics are put under the watch by uh, the RBI. The PCA framework deems uh, banks as risky if they slip below certain norms on three key parameters. One is capital ratios, uh, this you are already familiar, we discussed in the previous class session, that means what is capital adequacy, capital ratio, etc. And second one is the asset quality. And the third one is the profitability. So, let us now see the Reserve Bank of India uh, framework of PCA. So, about the prompt corrective action framework of the RBI is an essential element of RBI's financial stability framework. I would suggest you visit uh, RBI website and there you will get uh, lots of information uh, about the uh, pro PCA framework. So, this one a structured early intervention and resolution by regulators for banks that become undercapitalized due to poor asset quality or vulnerable due to loss of profitability. This is I am putting here a screenshot of the PCA framework of the RBI. Here you can see that mainly uh, there are three parameters one is capital to risk weight ratio and non-performing assets and third one is uh, return to assets. So, the first one is you know that this is the capital requirement, the first one CRAR, uh, this one is the capital requirement and second one um, non-performing asset, this is about the, the quality of assets and this one the ROA, this is about the return on asset, this is about the profitability parameter. So, coming to the first one CARAR, this if it is less than 9 percentage but equal to more than 6 percentage, then bank needs to submit capital uh, restoration plan, restriction on RWA expansion, entering into uh, new lines of business, uh, accessing or renewing costly deposits and CDs and making dividend payments. So, uh, order recapitalization, restriction on borrowing from inter interbank market, reduction of stakes in subsidiaries, reducing its exposure to sensitive sectors like capital market, real estate or investment in non 
statutory liquidity ratio securities etc if the crar is less than 9% but equal or more than uh, 6% so these banks these are the restriction for uh, if it's coming above 6% but below if it's below there are other restrictions comes it means they are going to even tighten up their restrictions uh, then means actually the rbi's watch or rbi's regulation monitoring will become more and more stringent on the concerned banks even look at for example uh, if crar less than 3% this time is really the bank is under the strong pca framework that means in addition to the actions he hitting the first and second trigger points which we mentioned in addition to all these more close monitoring that is the key important things here that the uh, rbi is frame that that monitoring why it become more close monitoring under the pca steps to merge uh, amalgamate liquidate the bank or impose moratorium on the bank if it's crr CRIR doesn't improve beyond 3% within one year or within such extended period as agreed to. So, you can look at from here that means when the bank's capital to risk weighted asset ratio that is CRAR if it is below 3% you know that I, I eventually uh, RBI is getting the signal that actually the bank is going to fail maybe within a, a couple of months or within a year the bank is going to fail uh, that the probability of bank failure is very high at that time reserve bank actually using the PCA framework to impose all these conditions so that uh, bank failure can be prevented the bank loss that the banking crisis can be averted this is one intervention one of the key component and the second one is about the non performing assets of the bank so if the non asset performing assets that the suppose the loan quality is very poor the asset quality is very poor then the banks will be having more and more number of suppose of the all loans if more percent for example if net nps over 10 percentage but less than 15 percentage that means is an indication that uh, banks financial health uh, is under risk right that means of the all the all the asset if around uh, 10 to 15 percentage is the npa that means non performing asset then uh, rbi will do that the, as for the pca framework special drive to reduce npas and contain generation of fresh NPAs. So, one is to reduce the NPAs, uh, another is preventing the generation of uh, fresh NPAs. Maybe uh, the NPAs, mostly it comes from uh, loans. So, one is to reduce that loans, another uh, do not give loans to that particular sectors or particular uh, the, with those uh, kind of borrowers who is having high risk. So, review loan policy and take steps to strengthen credit appraisal skills, follow up of advances and uh, suit field decreed debts, put in restriction in entering new lines of business, making dividend payments and increasing its, uh, its stakes in subsidiaries. So, that means restriction in all these lines that then new lines of business, dividend payments and increasing its stakes in subsidiaries. If net NPS become more, more than 15 percentage and above in addition to action hitting above uh, banks board is called for discussion on corrective action plan by the RBI. So, similarly the, this is about the net NPS part if it is becoming uh, more than 15 percentage of the NPS are 15 percentage of the total assets then uh, the bank will be called uh, by the uh, PCA uh, secretariat PCA board PCA framework under this framework the bank's board is called for discussion uh, on corrective plan of action by the RBI. And coming to the ROA if the profitability that the return on assets. So, here also if the uh, return on assets is less than 0 0.25 percentage then lots of restriction will be put on the concerned bank who is having ROA less than uh, 0 0.25 percentage then you can say that um, restriction on uh, accessing renewing costly deposits and CDs uh, entering into new lines of business banks borrowing from intermarket this kind of restriction will come up even including dividend payment uh, expanding its staffs and etc. So, these are all the restrictions that will be put on if the NPAs are below certain threshold. So, we can see here that th these are all the restriction that they put uh, these are all the prop corrective action 
uh, again that um, this is about the RBI framework, RBA uh, PCA framework in FDIC in the US, uh, these are all the framework they, they use. Uh, that means well capitalized, under capitalized, they make a categorization, uh, they make a five PCA categories like that, um, well capitalized, adequately capitalized, under capitalized, significantly under capitalized and critically under capitalized. And you please visit this website, this link and you will get uh, further information about the FDIC uh, PCA framework. To get more idea about the PCA framework in India. Uh, I would suggest uh, there is a uh, brilliant article, excellent article written by Dr. Uh, Viral Ajayria. Uh, this has been already freely available for download. Here, Dr. Viral Ajayria, he clearly explained uh, what is this framework is all about, uh, why is uh, important. Actually, in the PCA framework prior to Viral Ajayria term uh, in the RBI, uh, I think it was not uh, well received this PCA framework. and. Uh, he his writings actually highlights why we need PCA framework and in order to prevent the bank failure in order to ensure that the bank uh, is uh, bank's financial position is sound uh, is on track if uh, there is a problem uh, we need to make early intervention so I would suggest you read this article and get more clear idea about the uh, PCA, PCA framework in Indian context. So, I am just also giving some screenshot just to see that uh, you can read the PCA framework related news in the financial dailies. For example, this is the one uh, uh, where you say that three public sector units uh, banks are likely to be out of PCA framework by March. That means once they meet the regulatory requirement or the three uh, framework that we mentioned here. Uh, the capital adequacy, asset quality and profitability parameters. Once they start performing well in this, uh, they will be out of uh, this monitoring or this PCA framework. So, let us now move to the second another type of regulations that is called restrictions on asset holdings. So, here the banks regulations uh, that restricts asset holdings are directed at minimizing uh, the moral hazard problem. That means, uh, because of government safety net, we know that uh, government safety net encourages banks to take too much risk, which is which we already call that, um, that is nothing but moral hazard problem. So, bank regulation that restricts asset holdings are directed to minimize uh, this kind of moral hazard problem, because we already seen that uh, moral hazard problem is costing taxpayers uh, dearly. So, one of the strong rationale for government regulation. Uh, aimed at reducing risk taking on the part of financial institution and therefore even existed before the establishment of government safety nets like a federal deposit insurance. That means it necessitates a bank regulation because uh, the in order to prevent this moral hazard problem. So, here bank regulations actually promote diversification, it promote a diversification uh, which reduces risk by limiting the amount of dollar in particular categories or to individual borrowers. The point that we discussed in the one of the previous sessions that means uh, risk, risk reduction through diversification may be hedging or spreading the risk uh, in that way bank uh, as central bank as the member banks to pray to do the diversification that means uh, promoting diversification becomes one of the uh, component uh, of restrictions on asset holding that is part of the regulation uh, that is actually here restrictions on, on asset holdings and another thing is uh, banks are uh, restricted uh, prohibited of holding common stocks they are not allowed to invest in common e that equity they are not allowed to invest in equity. So, instead uh, mostly you can see that uh, if you look at the bank's balance sheet, most of their investment in addition to loan, it will be on uh, government bonds, um, mainly on in the bond market, uh, they are not allowed to invest in the equity market. Fourth component, uh, another types of uh, regulation is called financial supervision which includes financial chartering, the chartering and examination. Chartering financial institutions uh, is one method of preventing adverse selection problem because of government safety net we have seen that financial institution can be used by maybe the crooked or over ambitious entrepreneurs. Uh, to engage in highly speculative activities such as undesirable people are often eager to run a financial institution. 
right so we have seen this point that means uh, more risk loving people and more uh, people those who more likely to engage in moral hazard behavior are more likely to enter uh, in the banking industry because of the government safety net so they find go bank banking sector is one of the attractive business sector for them so in this case what central bank will do uh, they'll do chartering of financial institution so so that means a commercial banks obtain a charter either from the controller of the currency uh, or is the state the concerned uh, banking authority uh, in the respective uh, jurisdiction so to obtain a, a charter the people planning to organize the bank must submit an application uh, that shows how they plan to operate the bank so in evaluating the application uh, the regulatory authority looks at whether the bank is likely to be sound by examining the quality of the bank's intended management the likely earnings of the bank and the amount of the bank's initial capital so that means screening of proposal to open new financial institution uh, to prevent adverse selection so more importantly by preventing undesirable people owning them so you know in this case bank will super rbi will ask for uh chart we will engage in chartering financial institution so the second component is examination that means scheduled and unscheduled uh, to monitor capital requirements and restrictions uh, on assets holdings to prevent uh, moral hazard problem so that means uh, regular on site examination which allow regulator to monitor whether the institution uh, is complying with capital requirements and restrictions on asset holdings and function to limit moral hazards so bank examiners give banks a camel ratings as and this acronym is based on the six areas assess one is capital adequacy this you are familiar already then the asset quality this also the npa part uh, asset quality um, there will be bank examiners will be uh, monitoring this uh, assessing it then about the bank management uh, the quality of the bank management and uh, liquidity liquidity of the bank and sensitivity to uh, market risk including interest rate risk and inflation risk so these are the camel framework uh, through which the examination uh, will be done the assessing the bank examiners uh, assessing the banking system and accordingly they will be getting the ratings this is called camels ratings so in addition uh, they will be asked to fill a uh, periodic call report so that um, the central bank can come to know or clearly monitor uh, the bank's performance bank's financial conditions then uh, another type of regulation uh, is the assess assessment of risk management and here a uh, greater emphasis on evaluating the soundness of management process for controlling risk and you know that because of the financial innovations and with the objective to earn more and more profits uh, banks will be entering to multiple activities in addition to their conventional activities of uh, accepting deposit and lending loans so we have seen that uh, they will be uh, entering into trading activities many speculative activities so in this case the risk management of the bank is important because this change in the financial environment resulted in a major shift in thinking about the prudential supervisory process throughout the world so bank examiners for example now plays far greater emphasis on evaluating the soundness of a bank's management processes with regard to controlling risk so here there are several elements of sound the uh, in assessing the uh, risk management of the bank uh, one is the quality of oversight provided and the other one is adequacy of policies and limits for all risky activities then third one is quality of risk measurement and monitoring systems and the last one is adequacy of internal controls so these are the four elements of sound management that assess to arrive at the risk management ratings so even quality of oversight provided this by the board of directors and senior management because mainly the question is about the management and about the second one um adequacy policies and limits for all activities that present significant risk so that also will be assessed then the adequacy of internal controls uh, to prevent fraud or unauthorized activities on the part of employees and this also measured in terms of the management plans 
so what are the measures uh, are being taken by the bank bank's management in order to reduce the interest rate risk that also will be assessed uh, the internal policies and procedures used for that is laid down for uh, assessing uh, in order to uh, address interest rate risk and internal management and monitoring and similarly particularly important here is one more thing is that actually particularly important is the implementation of stress test which you calculate potential losses and the need for more capital under fictional dire scenario that is implementation of stress testing for the banks and also the value at risk calculation which measure the size of the loss on trading portfolio that may happen uh, 1% of the time that means the worst possible scenario of loss that the bank going to uh, in a phase that also will be measured under uh, this frame this this framework that the assessment of uh, risk management then coming disclosure requirements uh, here uh, requirements to adhere to the uh, standard accounting principles uh, to disclose and to disclose wide range of information so you know that the basel 2 is known more known more for uh, the importance of uh, disclosure requirements and supervision of the uh, banking system so in us uh, that um, this this act sarbanes oxley act of 2002 established the pub, uh, public company accounting oversight board so this is uh, another kind of uh, regulation Coming to the uh, next one, this one is called Consumer Protection. Consumer Protection Act of 1969 in the US, there are a series of legislation to protect the wel welfare of the investors that the Consumer Protection Act, that is Act of 1969, Fair Credit Billings of 74, Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 1974 and Community Reinvestment Act. And all these actually relevant because the subprime mortgage crisis illustrated the need for uh, greater uh, consumer protection. Then coming to one more, the last one that is actually the restrictions on competition. So one is this because one of the reason uh, this has been found that one of the reason for uh, banks to enter into new arena of business, new areas of business is because of the increase in competition that is increase in competition so because of high competition the profit uh, declines so banks were, uh, were they, they were looking for uh, more and more uh, new areas of businesses that actually make them more vulnerable to high risk and uh, that actually makes the bank crisis leading to the banking crisis and banking failure often so however you know that actually uh, this is actually sometimes we mostly what we know that or we always see that uh, increased competition that the uh, when the the sector financial sector is more and more competitive that is actually considered as a welfare gaining proposition uh, because actually um, more competition in most of the all the most of the economic theories uh, is argue that actually competition uh, promotes welfare be it for the consumers be it for the producers and for the entire society however with regard to banking sector sometime uh, empirical evidence suggests that is not always true so in that way but not to completely eliminate not to promote uh, monopoly or oligopoly market uh, just to minimize that competition uh, because the, if it is adversely affecting the bank's profit then actually uh, it just uh, justified as increased competition also increased moral hazard incentive you to take more risk so in that way there are some restrictions it's called branching restrictions uh, there are some legislation also uh, in this regard so then uh, disadvantages obviously you know that if competition is reduced when the market is becoming uh, imperfect that the competition are uh, become is uh, get de declining then obviously consumer charges uh, increases uh, welfare loss to uh, different stakeholders happen uh, decrease efficiency also become a part of uh, as, as an, an outcome of it another so we have seen the various measures for uh, types of regulations and one more thing before I summarizing this session, uh, there are uh, two types of supervision in the banking sector and the financial sector. And before the financial crisis, uh, the regulatory authorities engaged in micro prudential supervision, uh, which is focused on the safety and soundness, uh, safety and soundness of individual financial institutions. 
but after march 2007 eight crisis that the global cri financial crisis has made it clear that there is a need for macro prudential supervision which focuses on the safety and soundness of the financial system uh, in the aggregate overall what we have seen here is that financial institutions uh, in their search for profits have strong incentive to avoid uh, existing regulations by loophole minings that also we have seen in the previous session that is through money market and uh, sweep account there is always the, the financial institution they will be searching for loophole mining so in that way uh, what are the discussion the regulation that we discuss here all this regulation applies to a moving targets because regulators are continually playing cat and mouse with the financial institutions and financial institution think of clever ways to avoid regulation which then leads regulation regulators to modify their regulator regulation activities so that means the regulators continually continually face new challenges uh, in dynamically changing financial system and unless they can respond rapidly they may not be able to keep financial institution from taking excessive risk so here i am showing you some of the major financial legislation in the united states uh, over time uh, just to give you an overview uh, these are all the major uh, legislations so this is actually after the 2007-8 crisis so many acts introduced in the us even after 2007-8 uh, crisis as well also you can see many several several legislations that all actually you can see over time several legislations are coming because they have to uh, see um, uh, when um, the, the the financial institutions when they try to overcome uh, find uh, loopholes then again um, the regulators need to come up with a uh, modification of the existing uh, legislations, amendment of the existing legisl legislations as well. So let me stop here and see you uh, in the next session. Thank you.